I was reading an article, again by Dr. Brad Schoenfeld, on whether training to failure was necessary to maximize muscle hypertrophy or muscle growth. Now, I've always been a big fan of training to failure, but I really should clarify what I mean because I seldom actually train to absolute failure. I look at this two ways. One is doing my repetitions till I feel I can't do one more rep, which actually isn't failure. It's the rep before failure. Or two, I go to technical failure, which is where I stop when I can no longer perform another rep in good form. And here I sometimes find myself going one rep too far and stopping after I do a rep with less than perfect form. Technical failure is recommended on any of the big heavy compound lifts where poor form could lead to injury. One thing we do know for sure is that no muscle is being built while we're sitting at home injured. The theory behind training to failure is that it's the best way to bring about full motor unit recruitment of the muscle fibers, which is key when it comes to building muscle. This is one of the questions researchers are looking for an answer to. At what point do we reach full recruitment of our muscle fibers? A number of years ago, I had read a study that concluded training three sets to failure was the best way to build muscle. Now, I tried this and soon found out that if I trained every set to failure, I didn't have the energy to complete my workouts. So I quickly abandoned this approach. But I did keep doing the last set to failure and using this information to program the number of reps I was going to do on the next workout. This way, I'd be increasing the load or volume as soon as I was ready. In the article I was reading, it mentions how many of these studies aren't always done in such a way to mirror real life training situations or other metrics like volume don't match up, which is why it's better to take a look at the whole picture and not just one study. One thing that was the same in all the studies is at some point they all trained to failure. Whether it was to find a maximum number of reps that they could do with a given weight or their one rep max. And they used this information to base their future training on. The article mentions one study where they broke the people into two groups. One group trained to failure every workout and the other group would only train to failure once every week just to confirm progress and then they would set their reps up for the next week based on those results. Now as we get older, we don't recover quite as quickly as we used to, and we need to keep this rate of recovery in mind as the more intense we train, the more time we'll need for recovery. Brad does mention in his article that there was a clinical trial done that used people in their 60s, and it found that training volume may be more important than training to failure for muscle hypertrophy in older men. Once again showing that we can get fit and build muscle at any age. Unfortunately, at this time, I could only access the abstract for that clinical trial, but first chance I get to fully review it, I will let you know. Now, the conclusion Dr. Brad Schoenfield came to after reviewing all the available studies was that training close to muscular failure within one or two reps would likely be similarly effective for increasing muscle size as training to failure would be. So in essence, he was saying there was no need to train right to failure as close to failure would bring about the same result. So how would you know that you're training in this zone without training to failure? Interestingly enough, Brad mentions training your last set to failure on each exercise as a good possibility, but that as of yet, no studies have been done on this system of training. But I can tell you from my own personal experience, it works. The next option would be to occasionally train to failure whether that be once a week or once a month, just to gauge where you're at. Over time, you'll develop the ability to feel how close you are to failure. Just as when I do my last rep on my last set, I perceive that I can't do another rep. You can use rate of perceived exertion to gauge how many repetitions you have in reserve. Once you get this feeling down, you'll be able to tell if you have two reps left in the tank or three, and you will know when it is time to stop. But until you develop that feeling, you need to keep working out while having fun. This is Lawrence from Fit and 50. We'll talk to you again in the next one.